Welcome to CSX's Rice Hump Yard in Waycross, Georgia. This is the digital version of it in Run 8, and this is by far probably one of the most impressive things you'll see in train simulation that I think a lot of people don't know about or just flat out aren't aware of. Now, anyone that's familiar with CSX would know that uh, Rice Yard in Waycross is the largest hump uh, on the CSX system, the busiest. Uh, I think in the last report, they were humping about 1,800 cars. Uh, they've done more than that in the past. It's, it's kind of slacked off some, right? But uh, yeah, it's huge. And uh, there is a complete, just a darn near complete digital version of it in game. Uh, this is the bowl right here. I think it's, uh, what, 60 or 64 tracks, something like that. Come on down here to the B tower. There's the tail tracks or the pullout tracks for the uh, trim jobs. Over here is going to be the south forwarding yard. Four tracks for south forwarding here. So it's like a, a depart, basically a departure yard is what it is for uh, trains going to Florida, New Orleans, that direction. Over here on the opposite side is going to be the north forwarding yard. 10 tracks on it, uh, like what, 10,000 feet long, roughly? Uh, we got a little issue in the hump here that I got to fix in a second. We'll see about that. That's why you keep getting that message up here. Uh, and then on top of that, we've got the receiving yard. 12 tracks receiving yard. I think we're averaging about 10,000 feet. I know we could get two trains in those uh, back in the day. It was pretty common to uh, swing the Y over here and back into the yard. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, this is so incredibly impressive in train simulation it just blows my mind and this like there's a bunch of cars in there i think this session's got uh, 6908 rail units in the world as a whole there was a lot more stuff in this yard when i first started this session this is one that i got off the depot forum from uh, a user by the name of brad lb uploaded uh that basically populates the world for you there was a lot more stuff in here on this map when i first started out that i've either sent the uh, outbound trains on their way uh, deleted a few things kind of cleaned out but yeah you could have way more uh in this yard than what there is currently like it's just it's crazy how much stuff is in here uh if we look a little closer here and go actually we don't want to do that let's turn that off and let's do uh destination okay uh if you look at it no that's not what i want either never mind let's fix this again here there we go uh, you see the tags. The cars are all sorted by their uh, destination. So we got Yulee's here, the, the YUL, uh, New Orleans, New Orleans, uh, BNK. I'm not sure what BNK is off the top of my head. WWD, I guess, is Wildwood, maybe. Uh, oh, what else we got? Bib is Birmingham Boils. I think that's what that is. New is New Orleans as well, too. I, I don't know what the difference between NOL and NEW is. What else we got? Uh, Mobiles. We got Miamis. Over here on this side, we've got uh, some more news as well, too. I'm going to have to look that up. I don't know what new is. Uh, Charleston's there. Hamlet's. So, yeah, I mean, everything is sorted just like real life. This isn't static scenery objects here, guys. Like, these are all individual cars that you can go in and manipulate and do something with, which is just so incredibly impressive. So, I wanted to show you guys the yard because I haven't showed it to you. We haven't really looked at that. But, uh, yeah, this is it. So, we've got an issue down here. You know, we've got some cars that stop short. Uh, yeah, we got a few down here that stop short. Par for the course, even in a real hump. I've got a video right now showing uh, locomotives. It's made from the hump tower over here, A tower. Reichardt A tower. And you can see the hump units going down in the, uh, in the bowl cleaning up. There's a certain name for that job, I think. I can't remember. It's not the trim job. I thought it was something else, though. So maybe someone can clue in, or maybe something will jog my memory later, and I can remember what it was called when you did that. But yeah, you can go over the hump and go down in there and clean it up. I'll see if I can post a little clip of that video of them doing that. But uh, our problem is going to be right here. Right here. Uh, we have some cars hanging out. So I guess one is the overflow track, and one is the regular track. And um, yeah, we got to go clean this up. So well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of work the yard just a little bit today, guys. Just, uh, you know... Maybe uh, do some trimming, work the hump. I want to get the hump going again so you guys can see that. And uh, yeah, just have fun. Like, it's absolutely incredible. All right, so we've got our... Uh, this is our train right here that we were humping. And it goes all the way down to here. There you go. There's our hump power. 
sitting there. You know what? We'll go ahead and start these guys up. Actually, we can't, but we'll start them up anyway. Let's do that real fast. Let's uh, relinquish. Auto start. We'll do all the things. That should be good on this guy. Get his rear light on dim as well, too. All right. We'll get to him in a second. We got to go clean up down in the bowl real fast. So we're going to take this second uh, cut of power here and take it down in there. Now, one of the cool things about Waycross, a lot of people aren't familiar with, of course, it's got the double uh, pump leads, right? There was a time back in the past. Now, I haven't heard of them doing this in a very long time. I think they did it in the late 70s for sure during the 70s, maybe early 80s. Because, you know, carlo traffic is going down a lot. Like, intermodal is taking over everything. But they had the ability to split this uh, yard into dual hump mode. And basically what that meant was that it split everything down the middle. So you had a northern bowl and a southern bowl. And they could literally hump two trains at one time. Uh, I think what they basically do is like southbound traffic would go on the southern side of the yard. Northbound traffic would go on the northern side of the yard. So that'd be like your Atlantas, your Hamlets, uh, Birmingham, Chicago's, those cars. And on the southern side would be like Miami's, Wildwoods, uh, Orlando's, Tampa's, that kind of thing. So either way, pretty cool. Can't do that in sim. Unfortunately, can't do that in sim. But um, it's pretty cool what they did in real life. All right, we've got, actually, no, let's take his EOT off. We don't need that. Let's get rid of you. Come on, sometime today, please. Actually, I think we got to release it again. Let's get out of this building real fast. All right. All right, relinquish. Yes, I know you're unhappy in the bowl. We will get you fixed in a second. I promise you that. We will get it fixed. All right, let's grab this guy. Let's uh, close it off. Remove the EOT. We don't need that. Just automatically set it up with that. Is this guy the leader or is he? Yeah, I think that's, I guess that's the leader. Said his lead. Yeah, that's the lead. I don't know why I had the EOT on it. All right, put reverser forward. And let's see what our brakes and stuff look like as well too. Everything's off. So we should be go good to go minus the, uh, the handbrake. All right, we'll ease him down into the bowl. And we'll get this problem sorted out. Do all these hand throws here. Get you back the right way. All right, that should be good there. We should be kind of on our way down in the bowl a little bit there. He's going the other way. Why are you not? Or is that not right? There we go. Okay, we need a little bit more power than that, right? Got the big SD45 dash twos for the hump power. I don't know what they use right now in real life. Like I said, I don't really keep up with this stuff anymore. I know when I was down there before, they used um, they used SD uh, SD42s is what they used. Uh, before that, they used SD40s, which was really cool. And the original SD40s that used to, to be down there had uh, like rice yard hump units stenciled on the side of them. Like they had several units down there that were they're stenciled like that. And then before that, they used, uh, I think, SD35s and uh, another unit, a, a shot build that they had called an H15, which was basically a, a D-rated SD35. Uh, the the H-15s were like one of a kind to the Seaboard Coastline. Those were the only ones ever. They built them in their own shops. They took the dynamics out of them. I think they may have put some ballast in them. And then they, uh, they derated them. All right, we need to get this switch right here. And I think... I think we're good now. Okay, let's roll down in there. And uh, we'll get that problem taken care of. Release the independent, just coast on in there. That is pretty cool. It absolutely blows me away to have a working hump like this in game. Like it's absolutely nothing short of impressive. And I think a lot of people are put off by the graphics, the, the lower end graphics, but uh, you know, I don't think there's any sim out there in the world that you could have really super high-end graphics and have 7,000 rail units in the sim at one time. 
Like, I, I just don't see that happening. I don't see that happening on anything. Uh, there's definitely things that could be upgraded. There's no doubt about that. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's a fine balance if you want to have all this. And this is kind of on the slack end. Like I said, there, I've seen way more stuff in here before. I think I've seen as many, like on some of the sessions that I've done, as many as 3,000 cars uh, in the yard. Let's get this guy slowed down a little bit. I got to figure out how I'm going to fix this, exactly what we're going to do. It looks like they misrouted, right? Because that's New Orleans. And then the, the Birmingham's. We'll see. Let's couple up and drag these guys off. All right, let's go sort this out real fast. I'm trying to think how I want to do this. Let's fly around a little bit here. Okay, he was trying to route straight and he wound up coupling up. Yeah, the track just got too full because I wasn't paying attention last night. Uh, okay, new on one side, bib on the other. Okay, I see. So, new, I'm, like I said, maybe this is New Orleans here. I'm assuming that. So, I don't know why it didn't route to the other. It just completely misrouted. So this track is going to be New Orleans as well, too. So what we need to do is make our cut like right here. Now, there's no air on any of this stuff. Of course, all this is bled off. There's no air. So what we should be able to do is just make that cut right there. Reverse it. And back out, right? It's probably got a handbrake on it, I'm assuming. Yeah, okay. All right, let's see if we can ease them out of here and fix this. And honestly, you know, when I was doing this last night, I was really just kind of impressed that there were some goof ups because that is totally true to life. Like I said, in the video, you know, you can very much see the uh, hump power going down in there and straightening that out. All right, let's pull these guys out. And I think we just need to go over to this one right here. Yeah, okay. What we might could do is just kick them down in there. I don't know how much of a grade there is right here on this portion of the bowl. It looks to be relatively flat. I think it is. That's the hardest thing about working this job is just like knowing the switches and stuff, right? Like it's a lot to keep up with. And uh, single player, you know, a, a yard like this, you know, you could easily, you could have uh, a tower. A tower would basically oversee the whole yard ops, right? Now I look at a tower, like also running the hump, you know, luckily we got AI hump now, so you can do that. It can kind of do its own thing until something happens. Uh, you got B tower down there, the pullout track. So you got trim jobs working down there. So a tower would be one person. Uh, B would be another doing the trim. So that's two people, maybe a hostler to get engines to uh, the outbound trains, maybe even another trim job. So you're looking at probably, you know, a minimum of two people, uh, four, five, six more, ever how many you want to work this this yard uh, to, to like make it run effectively. Now you can do it single player like I am now. It's just on a slower pace, right? It's absolutely on a slower pace. Uh, so we're, I think we're good here. We got the news here and we got the... Birmingham's. All right. Let's bunch these guys up. Release independent. All right. All right. We'll take a little slack. We'll open a coupler. Give us some power. All right. That should be good. Come out of the power. Set the independent. There you go. We kicked them down in there. It worked out pretty good. Pretty good. Hopefully they're going to the right track. I think they are. Yeah, that's going to be the news there. All right. So now we need to go back with the Birminghams and they need to go on this track, right? There. Okay. Yeah, I, I see. I, I'm in touch with what happened now. I've got it figured out. All right. Let's reroute this guy. To me, like, this yard could totally be an operating session just in itself. Just get a handful of people in here, 
and just have AI trains coming in and sending the AI trains out and then having people uh, working the hump, trimming and um, hostling power, you know. That's the thing about hostling in this yard is that it can take you forever just to get from here uh, over to here to the north forwarding or if you got like a train that's going out the bow line because there's another track that comes out of here. Going this way would be the bow line towards Montgomery. You know, if you're putting power on this end of the forwarding yard, like it could take you a hot minute to get down there. So hostling can be kind of like a time intensive job in this yard. It really would. I think it would probably be more one, one of the more involved jobs. Uh, let's go ahead and knock that off and we'll just kick these down in there too. We'll kick these on top of the Birmingham's. There we go. Open coupler. All right. Give me a kick. All right, that should be good right there. Nice, should be good on that one. Uh, I guess we need to clean up some of these other ones too, some of these strays here. We need to get the B and K's. I have no clue what B and K could be. I'm trying to think, what could B and K be? I really just don't know. Someone jogged my memory and let me know what B and K could be because I'm drawing a complete and total blank. It's probably something like really super obvious that I'm just not, that I'm not getting, right? Yeah, it probably is. It's probably super, super obvious. All right, let's come up here to this switch. It's so cool. What, one thing I've always kind of wished in the game, I wish the power was louder from like the ground view. You know, you can hear it a lot more than this. Like they're really, really quiet in game. All right, got that set. So let's make sure, let's trace our, uh, trace our steps here. Make sure we're going in the right way. Yeah, we need to go on this guy, so we'll grab him, and we'll grab these two, and then we'll just kick them down in there. All right, let's do that. Knock off the independent. Yeah, way different than the mainline stuff. Way different, and I it really it just kind of dawned on me the other day. I was like, I haven't shown these guys the, uh, the hump. There's other humps in the game too. There's Barstow, there's West Colton. West Colton's pretty big. Uh, Barstow's a decent size. Uh, Selkirk. There's uh, there's plenty of other humps in the game. I remember when the game first released, didn't even have a hump. Like that wasn't a thing. I think that uh, maybe that came in the first update, right? The first big free update. Was humping maybe? I'm trying to remember, it's been so long ago. It'll be a late evening. Late evening in Waycross. I guarantee the air is going to be very still and very muggy. It was always a hot, muggy place down in Waycross. Let's get this guy slowed down. Now, the only thing is stinks. I think this guy is going to have a handbrake. Yeah, he's got a handbrake. Let's get that. Get these as well. Okay, that should be good. We should just be able to go in and bump them and just kind of push them along. We hit a little bit fast, but Spurs Railroad doesn't care. <laughs> Spurs Railroad doesn't care about the whole four mile an hour thing. We try to, we try to maintain the four mile an hour thing, but not always. That's a little better. All right, let's see if we can get down here and grab this coupler. Come on. Come on. Come on. Work with me here. There we go. Open. And then stop. There, let's see if they do it. Are they going to clear is the question. Um, no. 
No, they are not. I wonder, is this the overflow track right here for that? Maybe? I'm not sure. We may have to set them over in there. I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, that kind of stinks. That totally didn't work out the way I'd hoped. Yeah, we really need to run a, t a trim job in here. We need to do a trim job and pull some of these tracks, but... I really want to see y'all. I want y'all to see the hump work. All right, I guess we'll grab these guys and, and pull them back out and kick them down the other track, maybe. All right, let's see. Let's just grab it. Uh, grab it right here. Yeah, that's the thing. You constantly got to see about trimming. You got to pull these tracks because all it takes is one to fill up. Let's have a handbrake. That's what I thought. Those big SD45-2s pulling them like a boss even with the handbrakes on them. Like nothing for him. All right, let's get that. Throw this guy back. Um, I don't know if we're going to kick him or not. We don't have track skates, so... And there's nothing to bump up against on the end, either. Uh, we might could give him a light kick and just watch him. We may just do that. You know how to scratch that. We're going to kick him like no tomorrow. We'll just apply a handbrake. Open coupler. All right, so let's go. Give me a kick. Oh, it did. Pin dropped on his dog on it. That sucks. All right, let's try it again. That's true to life, and that sucks like no tomorrow as well, too. All right, let's try it again. There we go. All right, we'll see how far they go. Yeah, so you got some empty auto racks in here, some Yulees. So uh, the Yulees back in the day would have been the Fernandina Rockets. And I remember staying over, laying over in Waycross at the motel one night or one day. This is early in the morning. They called me. They said, you've been called for the Fernandina rocket. And I said, the what? They said, the Fernandina rocket. And I said, what's that? And the crew caller said, who's this? And I told him and he said, I am so sorry. He's like, I it, it's the wrong room. It's the wrong person. I didn't even cover that. That was a job that went south out of Waycross down to Grand Junction in Jacksonville and then went back across and up to Yulee and Fernandina that way. And uh, he was very apologetic. I, I actually, it, technically, I could have started my rest over at that point because I was it's supposed to be, you know, ever how many hours you claim undisturbed and I got disturbed. So I could have started my rest over at that point, but I didn't. I wanted to go back with the engineer that I came down with and uh, and get a good job, so I didn't. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I remember the Fernandina rocket. All right, let's go ahead and apply that. Good enough, I hope that's right. I hope that's right on this track because this setup is kind of foreign to me. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure to be honest. All right, let's get these guys out of here. Yeah, I just, I wish the power was a lot louder externally, externally, you know, external view. I really do. All right, is there anything else in here that needs to be cleaned up? Um, yeah, those guys should bump on down, maybe. 
We'll watch them. A few, uh, a few stragglers here and there. I think it's okay though. I don't see anything like the CLRs. I'm not sure. Okay, MTG would be Montgomery CLR. What would CLR be? Clearwater. I, I don't know. That's just off the top of my head. I don't know what CLR would be. Yeah, no clue on that one. All right, well, we get this guy up here and put away, and then we'll start the hump back, and then you can see uh, see the hump job working. Need a little power to get over here. Uh, of course, once again, that is a tower. I've uh, been up there in the top a few times. Yeah, I've been up there in the top a few times. One of the last times that I was ever in that tower, I had to go up to the top, talk to a train master because I needed a new uh, timetable. They'd issue new timetables and we didn't get one or I didn't get one. And my current timetable was out of date and I had to talk to him and they didn't have timetables there. And so he just told me to go with it. And then when I cub down here and work with a hostler, because when you cub, you had to come down here and spend, uh, I spent three days with the hostlers down here learning the yard. And every morning we would go up here to the very top of the tower. There was two rows. There was a row up front with everyone. I guess the uh, guy that worked the hump and all that stuff, the retarders and stuff. And then they had a row back here in the back that was like training masters and stuff. Then in the very back of it, they had a little like kitchenette area and uh, the, the hostlers would make breakfast for everyone. We'd have like eggs and bacon and sausage and all kinds of stuff. It was actually really good. So we'd have uh, breakfast up there every morning. All right. I think I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's release these guys. And let's see about getting the hump started again. Let's go back. Let's hit control F6. Up controller enable that should be good we'll come down here and AI these guys and they should start doing what they do uh, let's see this guy here AI recruit all right let's see if he does it used to not be able to do this used to have to do all this manually but now, luckily, uh, AI can kind of do it for you. Like, you don't have to babysit them as much. Who he does. That's cool. He gives the three blast uh, backing up. You want to do it? Sometime today, bro. Oh, there you go. He's starting to ease into it. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? All right, let's go up here to the top. We'll see what he does here. All right, he's just now getting it going. We don't really, we don't really have any room for any new cars. Like that's the only thing. We really need a trim job down there. We need a trim job to pull that track, like Pronto Al Dente. He's just kind of easing it along there. Uh, let's put this guy in reverse. Let's back. Can we back him up just a little bit further? A little bit. Let's do that. Here we go, just tad, so we can see the hump. All right, there you go. They cut the one car off. They're coming in really, really, really slow.
and there you go he's doing his thing that, that is so cool that is like the coolest thing ever it never ceases to amaze me this is the one i'm worried about this is yeah this is the one I'm, that's gonna be our problem child right here we may have room for one more luckily we got a, the new the new or i guess new orleans chicago and then a bunch of atlanta's behind that some Montgomery's, some Savannah's, some uh, Selkirk's, Cincinnati's, uh, Waycross cars, uh, Jacksonville cars, Chicago. Yeah, no more New Orleans, at least. All right, this guy's been cut loose. For those of you that have never been around a working hump yard, they are so incredibly loud. Like the squealing and the screeching and everything, they're so loud. All right, we got the Chicago going. Let's see where the Atlanta's going here. Selkirk's there, Selkirk's. I just pulled the Atlanta cut last night, so that track should be fairly, it should be empty. Yeah, okay, that's the one I pulled last night. Yeah, I did a, uh, yeah, there's the Atlanta car down there. I did a 544 last night. I did a 544. I pulled the Cincinnati's out and then uh, put them on the head end and then put Atlanta's on the bottom. I like how they did back in the day and then sent it on its way. So yeah, those have been cleared out. Uh, this is the one, like, can we clear one more car up? Yeah, that's gonna be really, that's gonna be close. All right, got a cut of three Atlanta. I think it's a max of three, right? I can't remember what the max they did back then. It was like two or three. There you go, two more Atlantas. Nice uh, evening view on the hump, right? It was always cool to stand right here and watch this. Did it a few times when uh, I I was down there with the hostlers and we had some downtime. I'd stand here and watch it. It was pretty cool. Hostlers was a good job, man. And those dudes, like that guy was like the highest seniority out of the entire yard, I think. Like he'd been there for ages. Knew it like the back of his head, and believe it or not, we didn't make that many moves for the day. Like, we hustled a few engines, but <laughs> we, it wasn't like we were just hustling engines all day long. It wasn't like that at all. I was really kind of surprised. There's a Savannah rolling down. Uh, we got some Selkirks. Selkirks getting kind of full. Yeah, I really think on a session with just the yard, like you need someone manning a lot or the a tower and then you need someone uh, like a full time trim job down there and maybe a secondary trim job slash hostler that could do both. Of course, uh, scenery around the yard is really light. Because we got, uh, you know, potentially thousands of cars in the yard, you know, like all your resources are going towards that. If 75% of your system resources are going towards scenery and you haven't even put a car on in the yard, then like you, that doesn't bode well. Like that's not going to work out, but uh, there's really not much of anything down here anyway, honestly, like scenery wise. Did he stop? Looks like he stopped. Yeah, hump controller disabled due to air rush our hump. B-59 is full. Okay, so yeah, he automatically stopped. Like, he sensed that there's something going on. And I can't remember which one is B-59. Is Montgomery right here? Maybe. I can't remember which side was which. We got the short tracks over here. Yeah. There's our Cincinnati's rolling in. 
Savannah car. Yeah, they're still going. The Atlantis are still going down as well, too. Pretty cool stuff, right? Like, really, really cool. If uh, if you have the fits or the A-line or whatever, like, you can't have those routes without having this one, the, the Waycross DLC. I forgot to add that in. This is actually DLC. It's a Waycross DLC. Um... It's the linchpin that holds the entire Southeast together, right? Like this is where it's all at right here. This is originating point for everything or the, the, you know, termination point. So it's really, really super cool. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Love all of you and we'll catch you on the rails next time. Peace.